Hey all, my name's Luke and in this video, I'll show you how to make this awesome hot wire foam cutter. Foam is widely used in model making for various details, so having your own precision foam cutter will help you get the perfect size and shape you need. To start off with, we'll need a nice smooth and flat board to act as our tabletop for the foam cutter. In my case, I made mine 30cm wide by 60cm long, which should be more than enough for what I plan to use it for. It'll also need to be strong and sturdy in order to resist flexing whilst we are using the cutter. I went with a 12mm thick piece of MDF for the main surface. The sides are made using 19 by 42 mm pine and simply glued into position with wood glue and weighed down as the glue dries. The main supporting arm for the nichrome wire is made using 6mm diameter steel rod. It can be a little difficult to bend, but using a hammer should get the job done. To bend the top of the rod, I temporarily mount it into a scrap piece of wood using the copper saddle clips screwed down to hold it tightly. Then bend it to shape so it's got a nice gradual curve. Now we can mount it to the main board. It's a 6mm rod, so I use a 6.5mm drill bit to create the hole. Due to the curve in the rod, it needs just a little more wiggle room to be able to fit through the board. The clamp helps press the rod flat against the bottom of the board as I fix it down with the saddle clips. Now I need to remove the excess rod. I just eyeball the position where I want the nichrome wire to connect to the bottom of the board. This is the point where the wire will drop vertically down from the rod and go to the underside of the board. Then I cut away the excess and file the end clean. While it's still clamped, I also drill a small hole in the very end of the rod. This is where I insert and solder a small piece of wire to act as a hook for the nichrome wire. Just be sure to file the wire after cutting it because it can be quite sharp and if you're anything like me, you'll probably scrape your arm or hand across it. Next, we need to drill the hole that will allow the nichrome wire to poke through the surface of the cutter. The hole needs to be perfectly below the small hook at the end of the rod. To achieve this, I simply hang a piece of string with a small weight from the hook. With the weight stable, I mark the point where it first touches the surface. Then remove the rod from the base so we can drill out the hole. To prevent the hot wire from burning the wood, I flush mount a washer into the surface, first by using a spade bit and drilling out just enough to have the washer sit flush. I can then drill out the rest of the hole using a smaller drill bit and glue the washer in place using a fast drying epoxy glue. Now we can permanently fix the rod onto the base using the saddle clips again, plus a couple of extra clips just to ensure everything is solid. Test the position once more with the small weight on a string. If it doesn't hang perfectly over the hole, you can gently push and bend the rod a little to make sure it's centered again. This piece of wood that makes up our cross section will hold our clamp that the nichrome wire connects to. Mark the exact spot where the hole meets up with the cross section and about halfway along its width, mark out a spot for the bolt. Just ensure it's slightly off to one side of centerline, then drill out the hole and fit the bolt. I deliberately made the hole quite tight for the bolt so it would be resistant to twisting later when tightening the wire clamp. 
The clamp is made by adding two small nuts followed by two washers and a wing nut. Once you're happy, simply apply the wood glue, press it down and ensure it's lined up with the hole. Then weigh it down as it dries. Unfortunately, the electronics I planned on using for the temperature controller wasn't available in time for this project, so I decided to purchase a different unit to control the wire temperature. However, this meant raising the base to create room. This was easy enough to do, as you can see, simply by adding two small strips of wood to the sides. The front fascia that will hold the switches is cut to fit using 3mm MDF. I position the electronics roughly in the positions I want them and mark their positions on the back of the fascia. The holes are drilled out and then tested to ensure everything fits. Now that I can see they all fit nicely, I can glue the fascia onto the base and clamp it as it dries. The temperature controller needs a bit of extra bracing as well. Simply achieved by gluing two small blocks either side of the controller and then using the two small tabs to screw it down. The process of fixing the controller onto the fascia will largely depend on the type and brand of controller you choose to use. The controller I'm using is a 12 volt DC 8 amp controller and is more commonly referred to as a dimmer or a motor speed controller. Just ensure whichever controller you do choose to buy is capable of handling your power source, which I'll discuss more towards the end of the video. Now we can start making the foam cutter look a little bit better. I ended up painting the sides with Rust-Oleum flat black and the surface was painted with Rust-Oleum flat white. Just make sure you mask the areas you don't want painted and go easy. Many light passes works much better than making one or two heavy passes. As for wiring, here is a basic wiring diagram of how the components connect. The switch I'm using is a 12 volt push on push off type switch that has an LED built into the switch itself which is very handy and a good visual indication that power is being applied to the wire. It's just a matter of carefully following the diagram and doing your best to keep everything neat and organised. By being methodical and taking your time with the wiring, you'll prevent making any big mistakes. For example, wiring the positive and negative leads around the wrong way. This will definitely destroy your temperature controller. One of the output wires from the temperature controller simply connects to the steel rod and the other connects to the bolt and clamp assembly. By soldering the wires to small washers, we can easily attach them firstly to the saddle clip and also onto the bolt and clamp assembly, making them easy to attach and remove if required. The wire is 28 gauge nichrome wire. To make it easy to connect, I first cut it to size and then I loop it through a small washer and twist it so it's secure and won't pull off. Finally, add a small spring to the washer as well. As the wire heats up and cools down, it will expand and contract and we want the spring to take up the excess slack as the wire heats up. That way we will be able to get nice straight cuts in the foam. To install the wire, you just attach the spring over the small hook on the end of the steel rod and then thread the bottom of the wire through the hole so it comes out underneath the main board. Now slot it between the two washers in the clamp assembly and once in position, tighten the wing nut so the washers clamp down on the wire. For a bit of an aesthetic appearance, I added some placards to the fascia using spray adhesive. It just adds an overall professional look. As for power source, just ensure your power supply can handle the required load needed to heat the wire. 
For the size and length of wire I'm using, I found 12 volts and 6 amps is enough. A simple way of working this out is to use the Nichrome wire calculator that is available at Jacobs Online. I'll add a link below so you too can use the calculator. In my case, I made my wire foam cutter using 28 gauge Nichrome wire. I have a length of 22 centimeters and I want to heat the wire up to at least 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So by selecting the temperature and then dragging the volt slider, I can see that to get 600 degrees, I only need about 5 volts and 1.6 amps. So as long as my power source is more than that, I know I'll be able to safely heat the wire without damaging the power source. So that's it. The same principles I use here can be applied to make all manner of foam cutters, from tabletop cutters like the one made right here, through to small handheld cutters that can be powered from a battery. I hope you enjoy this project and if you'd like to help and support this channel, please feel free to check out my Patreon page. Cheers and thanks for watching.